Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Good morning. Uh, this is lecture 8 where we will do the strain calculation is using strain rosette. We are still on the large topic of plane strain and strain measurement using strain gauges and what do we do with those readings. So now we will do strain calculation using strain rosette. So strain measurement of a point, strain measurement of a point on a structure is usually done using strain rosette. This is the cheapest or perhaps the most uh, widely available technique. So for example, any point on the structure, this is quite small, right? And you put this on a structure and you've got the strain gauges and the wires connecting it to connecting the strain gauges to the data acquisition system or to the Wheatstone bridge before at and, and, that, and that are transmitted to the data acquisition system. So you can take the readings out from each gauges and from some mathematical equations you can relate this strain gauges reading to the strain in the horizontal direction i.e. the normal strain in the x direction the vertical direction or the normal strain in the y direction and also the shear strain or the angle strain so here is two here are two examples of a rosette a rosette consists of mm, three strain gauges this one is called a rectangular rosette which is 45 degrees a zero degree a 45 degrees and a 90 degrees this is called a delta connection or triangle connection which has a degree of 120 120 degrees between the gauges so this is what happened to the system okay okay for the strain uh, rosette theory we need to understand just a little bit of the theory that we have covered before so we know that the we know that the normal strain in any direction theta and like epsilon theta here if there is let's say this is an element and i will take this element from the horizon from the horizontal line by an angle theta we can find the normal strain in this direction given by this formula so epsilon theta equals to half of the uh, strain in the x direction epsilon x plus strain in the y direction epsilon y plus half of the difference i.e half epsilon x minus epsilon y times cos 2 theta plus gamma xy which is the shear train over 2 sine 2 theta so this is the strain at any angle so I'm going to highlight this using the yellow pen so that you know that this equation is the equation relating the strain to the uh, in any direction if we know what uh, if we know what the epsilon x is epsilon y and gamma xy so in this case where we know that epsilon x is the normal strain in the x direction epsilon y is the normal strain in the y direction and gamma xy is the shear strain on the x phase in y direction so uh, these are three unknowns and in order for us to know uh, epsilon x epsilon y and gamma xy we can do the measurement in three different angles and therefore the strain rosette provide you with that angles previously we have got the rectangular strain rosette which theta is 0 degrees 45 degrees and 90 degrees and we can also have the triangle or delta rosette at 120 degrees apart so when we know these are three unknowns epsilon x epsilon y gamma xy and we can test or measure the strain at three different angles then we have got three equations and we can solve that to find all these three parameters so from that three parameters what we can do is we plot the strain uh, more circle and if this is the strain on the x phase and is this is strain on the y phase from there you can determine the principal strain or uh, by 
um, knowing the center of the circle plus the radius of the circle. We have done this in the uh, last uh, lecture, lecture 7. And from there, once you know what epsilon 1, 2 is, you can relate that to your uh, principal stress by using this uh, stress strain equation. So stress in the in the principal stress in the one direction equals to E is the molus Young, 1 minus nu square, which is this is the Poisson ratio, times the strain, the principal strain, plus the Poisson ratio over uh, Poisson ratio times the uh, principal strain in the second direction. So that's how you so what close the loop of trying to find the strain, measure the strain, find the critical and the principal strain, and from there find the stress. So this is the stress strain relationship. I'm gonna put the blue color here. I said this is the stress strain relationship. Okay. So you can now complete your whole, whole understanding why we need to carry out the strain measurement system. Because it's very difficult to measure stress, but it is possible and quite practical to measure strain. And from the strain measurement, from the strain measurement, we can calculate the principal strain and from there we can use this equation to find the principal stresses. Okay, so I so this is uh, another way of looking at it, any combination of three rosette, a uh, general case. So this is strain in the uh, theta 1, strain in theta 2, and strain in theta 3. So in general, the strain at any angle can be represented if you know what epsilon x, epsilon y is, using this relationship. Yeah, This relationship is a similar relationship that we have done before, and this has led us to the more circle of the strain. But the strain rosette becomes a practical way of implementing this for the plane strain. So what is the relationship between principal strains and principal stresses? Once we have determined the principal strain, the principal stresses can be determined. Okay. So if you know what your Young's modulus is, you know your Poisson ratio is, and then you can you know what your principal strain, then you can calculate your principal stress equals to sigma 1 equals to E divided 1, 1 over mu square times your principal strain plus mu times principal strain in the secondary secondary direction. So x, uh, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. So this is the relationship between um, principal strain and principal stress. Okay, so you know your principal strain and then you can do your principal stress. So that's, that's the relationship. So so let's start with the strain uh, rosette, which is in the rectangular direction or rectangular arrangement. So, so you've got the strain, you've got the strain in the A direction, you've got the strain measurement in the B direction, and you've got the strain C in the C direction. So F E N or E theta in any direction is given by this equation, long equation. We've done this several times in the previous slide. So when you substitute at zero degrees, yeah, so you look at this equation, at 0 degrees, theta equals to 0, so sine 2 theta equals to sine 2 times 0 to sine 0, so gamma xy equals to 0, sine theta sine 0 degrees, this is cos 0, cos 0 is equals to 1, and therefore we can get epsilon at 0 degrees equals to epsilon x. This is obtained from this big equation, yeah, so let me mark that, so you know the big equation here. You bring it here, and then you substitute the value theta equals to 0, and you know your cos 0 is cos and sine 0 is 1, okay, and then from there you got this equation. So, the strain epsilon x, we know epsilon x already, which is equivalent to epsilon a. And we can now start with also at theta equals to 45 degrees so we need to look at b okay so at b at b we have uh, theta equals to 45 degrees find the mean value minus the half of the difference 
cos 2 theta, 2 times 45 is 90 degrees, cos 90 is 0, sine 90 is 1, so we got gamma xy 1, half xi plus xy, so here we got the equation number 2, 2 epsilon b equals to epsilon x plus epsilon y plus gamma xy, so that's equation 2. So now we move on to strain at theta equals to 90 degrees, okay, so we have now EC as a function of at theta equals to 90 degrees, half x plus y, ax plus by, half the difference of the strain, cos 2 theta, 2 times 90 is 180 degrees, cos 180 degrees is minus 1, and sine 180 degrees is 0, then you can have the equation for um, gamma xy from at 90 degrees, EC equals to, uh, this is, you can now see that, EC equals to epsilon y, and you solve equation 3, 1, and 2, and we got gamma xy equals to 2 epsilon b minus epsilon a minus epsilon c. So from that, you what your measure is epsilon b, a, and c, what you want is um, epsilon uh, x, epsilon y, and gamma xy, right? So from there, once we know this, I'll change the color. So once we know this, we can now do principal strains. Okay, so that's how we do it. So the same approach can now be applied to the strain rosette in the delta 60 degrees. So in this delta 60 degrees, we've got A, let me write it down, theta A, oh, let me make it clear. Theta A equals to 0. Theta B. Theta B equals to 60. And Theta C equals to 120 degrees. So, you can see this, this is written here. This is written here. Okay. So that you now have this as representing that. Okay, after that, we have to use the general strain transformation equation. And this is given again. I'm putting that equation back here. En equals to half the mean value, half of the difference, cos 2 theta, and sine 2 theta. Repeat the same thing. Theta equals to 0. We will have Ea, which is replace theta equals to 0. We have got this long equation here. And then finally, Ea equals to epsilon x. It's quite uh, obvious to you that A is in the direction of x yeah so if we can draw that that is x and y so it will be obvious that a is parallel to x so measurement of theta epsilon a the normal strain in the a direction is equal to in to, to x so we'll do that for b and b where theta equals to 60 degrees if you have done here that b, b theta equals to 60 degrees yeah so at the end of the day we will have uh and then we also do theta equals to 120 degrees. So we've got C at 120 degrees. And then we can uh, use that equation to determine the relationship. Now we move on to uh, strain rosette, uh, strain gauge rosette, which is star direction. Um, I wouldn't uh, try to bring or explain each of them, but you know the angle here. What is important for you to know that uh, angle A is 0, angle B, angle B is 120 degree, and angle C is 240 degrees. So from that, you can calculate uh, the value of epsilon a equals to epsilon x and then epsilon b find the solution in epsilon c and you can now find the uh, solution you have to solve those equations uh, one by one so well that's that's to one example here where the first question said determine the maximum shear stress at a point by using the following strain gauge readings of a rectangular strain rosette so he give us a rectangular strain rosette and also Young's modulus is given 
this is for us to find the maximum shear stress. So they want to find, or they ask us to find tau max. So we have got the strain at zero degrees to be 400 micro strain, at 45 degrees to be 375 strain, and at 90 degrees to be 200 uh, micro strain. So what do we do? So we look at the equations. Okay, we know from equation one, two, and three, epsilon a is at theta degrees. So we know that epsilon x equals to 400. We use equation two at theta equals to 90 degrees is epsilon c, and that's represent epsilon y. And then we have got equation for b where it is using uh, similar equation E B is given by theta equals to 45 degrees uh, is given 3.7 and we know that the equation for E B is this E X plus E Y plus gamma X Y equals to 2 E B and from that we can solve yeah because we know E X is here let me slowly take you there so you know your E X is there you know your E Y is here and you know your EB your EB is here maybe a blue color would be better so your EB is here so once you know your EB which is 375 EY is 200 micron and EX is 400 micro strain so we have now the answer for gamma XY which is 150 times 10 to the power 6. So we can use the equation principal strain to find the principal strain half OC plus minus R. R is this. And then gamma XY over 2. So this is the value of OC. Yeah, this is OC. Plus minus R. And from there, we get epsilon 1 as 425 micron and epsilon 2, 175 micron. Uh, you can always draw, you can always draw the surface. So if you know your x coordinate, and just take the trouble here to draw the more circles of the strain. So the x coordinate, is, we know what uh, epsilon x is, is 400 micro strain. And the shear strain gamma xy over 2 is 150 divided by 2, so 75 micro strain radian. And then we've got the coordinate for the y. Y is EC, 200 micro strain. So 200 micro strain. And then gamma should be negative of that, uh, half of this, so negative 75. Negative 75 micro strain. So if I were to plot the stress strain, ah uh, sorry, the normal strain versus gamma x y over two, and this is strain normal, so we've got two hundred and four hundred, so one two three four, two hundred, four hundred. This is positive one two three four, two hundred four hundred, and then one two three four. 1, 2, 3, 4, this is 400, posit uh, negative, minus 200. So our first coordinate is, this is minus 200. Our first coordinate is 475. So we've got 400 here and about 75 there. So this is our first coordinate with phase x. And phase y is 200 and minus 75. So, uh, 100, 200, 200, so, so, so it's about 75 is about here. Um, so minus 275, something like that. So if I change the color now, I should be able to draw the more circle of this and find that this is my C and I can find my R, the radius there. So from that, I can determine my epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. Epsilon 1, 2 equals to OC plus minus R. 
So my OC, I can calculate my OC. What is my OC? My OC is the mean value epsilon x plus epsilon y over 2. So that is 400 plus 200 over 2. That uh, gives us 300 microstring. So epsilon e is half that is 300 microstrain and then we can find the uh, radius of that so r is given by epsilon x minus epsilon y over 2 plus gamma xy over 2 squared okay and then find this r and you can do the calculation to find your value of r yeah so that's in microstring you can finish that exercise on your own and we have got the answers here for you to check your work epsilon 1 equals to 425 and that is 75 so r must be 125 so r is 125 microstring so from there we can now proceed to calculate the principal stress so the principal stress is given by this equation so sigma 1 equals to e over 1 minus u square plus times epsilon 1 plus mu epsilon 2 and we can get that value to be so we can substitute that value e is given to us as 200 right mu is i can't remember what mu was 1.28 so and then you can calculate epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 okay so you will have sigma 1 equals to 100 megapascal and sigma 2 equals to 60 megapascal so that's the radius of this uh, can you find the stress at any under angle yes definitely because once you got this circle you know your OC you can always rotate it to find the stress at any theta okay so that this is 2 theta so it's not a problem to find the stress at any other location so what we have done here is that we have linked the strain that we obtain from the strain rosettes okay and then from there we find the principal strains Okay, strain from rosettes. So let's put that rosettes. Okay, and then we can find the principal strain epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. And then we calculate the principal stress. Principal stresses using stress strain relationship. So you can find sigma 1, sigma 2. So that's basically what we are looking at. We are looking at how we can do the measurement. This is the first thing we do. We measure here at the strain rosette. And then we do some calculation or processing. Uh, so do processing or post-processing. And to get the principal strain. And from there, you can get the stress level. So that is uh, quite uh, straightforward uh, I think uh, the equations for the big equations for the strain transformation will be given uh, it's not difficult to remember but it will be given in the in the exam questions and also in the test so that you can uh, use the formula uh, uh, directly okay so that will be the uh, what we want to cover on the strain rosettes and we've given strain rosettes at 45 degrees 60 degrees and 120 degrees now uh, you can see that the easiest one will be the uh, 90 degrees because epsilon theta equals to zero equals to epsilon x epsilon uh, theta so if you look at the 40 the rosette the rectangular rosette theta equals to zero theta equals to 45 and theta equals to 90 degrees so this is in a way very much aligned to 
epsilon x this is very much aligned to epsilon y and then that thing this so so theta can be can, can be calculated so from there sigma x y can be calculated so so in short we say that the rectangular one are the easiest one the 60 degrees and the 120 degrees a slightly longer way of processing the data so i'm gonna set this uh, exercise number two where you have got rectangular uh, strain rosette shown in the figure which give us a following reading so epsilon one is thousand yeah so you got a thousand here a thousand epsilon one is given by thousand micro strain epsilon two is epsilon two is 800 micro strain and epsilon three is given as 600 micro strain so find the direction of the major principal strain with respect to gauge one he wanted to know actually what is the angle the principal angle the angle of the principal strain okay so how do we do this what kind of data we have we actually can solve this using the strain transformation equation we need to find uh, we need to solve this by finding epsilon x we need to find epsilon y and we need to find gamma x y over 2 with this we can measure find the coordinate x epsilon x gamma x y over 2 we can coordinate y of phase y epsilon y gamma x y over 2 negative and then from there we can draw the more circle for the strains normal and shear strain okay let's say we have this for our x and this for our y for example so we can do the more circle and from there you can get your principal stresses suppose this is your uh, x and y and from there you find this is your two theta p so this is what you want to do you want to find the principal angle for the normal strain that's how uh, thinking line is after that it's all about doing the maths to find the solutions and look at this is the solution uh, epsilon theta is given by this uh, equation half epsilon x epsilon y difference cos 2 theta plus gamma x y sine 2 theta so the values are known epsilon at 0 degrees is 1000 micron epsilon at 45 degrees is 800 micron epsilon at 90 degrees is 600 micron is given and we know at theta equals to 0 we substitute at 0 so this is 1000 half x plus y cos 2 0 is 0 cos 0 is 1 and then sine 0 is 0 so the first equation is half epsilon x plus epsilon y minus half x so this is so that is equivalent to epsilon x okay so this is equation number one at theta 90 degrees we know that epsilon y equals to the epsilon 90 so it's given 60 and uh, 600 micro strain and at theta 45 degrees we substitute this uh, e45 is 800 micron equals to half x plus y this is known yeah? this is already known ex epsilon x is 1000 epsilon y is 600 minus so you know that gamma xy equals to 2 times 800 times minus epsilon x minus y and then you can get gamma xy equals to zero when gamma xy equals to zero the shear strain is zero so when the shear strain is zero it is already the principal uh, principal plane so principal plane is already this the, the 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 stress is already like if we draw this we know that our data is our data so we we from this data let me use blue color so we can show you that x equals to epsilon x epsilon x is a thousand thousand micron and then micro strain 
and then gamma is 0. And then as phase y also is given by at 90 degrees, 600 micron, micro strain, and there's no shear stress. So if you draw the epsilon gamma xy over 2, this is 0, you've got this uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this is 1,000. This is 600. So there you go. This is your phase X. This is your phase Y. And the Mohr circle is there. So it's already on the principal plane. So you see that's already on principal plane. So the x direction is parallel to epsilon zero degrees. Yeah, so that's the solution. Okay, so I hope you've learned how to use the uh, strain rosette and use the numbers from there. Can you find the principal stresses from here? Definitely, you can use the stress-strain relationship. You just need to find the modulus Young and the Poisson ratio. So it's a very straightforward. No more. It's not something that can have a full of uh, tricks and and deceptive questions. I think. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so these are the solution. I leave it you. I leave it here for you to find. Uh, uh, for you to uh, refer to. What we have discussed in the previous slide yeah so you can read it on your own this is solution for uh, theta zero degrees this solution of theta at 45 degrees 90 degrees and you do the calculation and then you can get that the shear strain is zero and that implies the strains are already the major principal strain it's thousand uh, micro strain okay so